Okay, hi, this is Michael Ellis. Um, just an update on my uh, experiment of uh, um, sunlight by wire. Obviously, as you can see, it's not going very well. Um, just hooked up to the organite and the aluminum plate up on top of the um, the uh, ceiling and the small copper plate uh, by wire connected to the organite. Um, obviously, isn't doing much. Uh, it's been about two weeks since I uh, planted this uh, clover seed and uh, it's not growing very well. It's growing really slowly. And about a couple days ago, I planted, uh, probably a week ago, I planted some other beans like beans and um, other crops. And uh, those are barely even sprouting yet. So um, it's obviously not going very well. Um, and as you can see, that little uh, cocoa plant um, uh, just isn't doing anything. It's just frozen in time, basically. So, and it had some rotted leaves, so um, I cut those off, but... Um, but I, on the upside, I did make a pretty awesome discovery. And I'll, uh, take over there to show you. I found the perfect use for those old fluorescent bulbs that don't work anymore. And this is pretty freaking awesome. So, um, so, uh, now I don't have anything to prove this to you. I don't have, like, my, um, uh, infrared, I couldn't find my infrared thermometer, but I should probably go get it. Um, there's a nice heat coming off of this, and it goes all the way through my room. Um, it's like an infrared heat. It's not, it's not, uh, I don't, I don't want to say it's, uh, it's a radiating heat, but it's more of a, more of a, like, heating up my room kind of heat. So, um, so it's like almost more of an infrared type of heat. And the way I accomplished that was by taking the, the um, uh, what you call it, the fluorescent tube, and and this is just a regular uh, mercury uh, uh, gas uh, uh, what you call it, uh, mercury vapor, uh, sodium maybe I don't know, um, just the normal mercury uh, uh, evacuated. Um, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> Fluorescent tubes, you know, the normal ones. The old school ones, you know, that give you headaches and stuff. Um, just connect it up either end to my, uh, organite. The, just the copper pipes in them. And, um, just by, uh, little, uh, alligator wires. Alligator clips and, um... Nothing else concerned with all that. This can all be disconnected as far as that's all concerned. And it'll generate a nice heat just from the organite brick. And that's, you know, accepting... That's uh, sinking in the uh, Earth's magnetic field uh, energy and re-radiating it out. Uh, it, it acts as a spark gap. And if you've ever seen um, any of Nikola Tesla's uh, radiant energy devices... The spur gap is the secret to the, uh, to the, to the unit, and um, and this is actually acting like a vapor, uh, spark gap actually, so it's like an arc, um, type of lamp. Uh, if you actually think about it, in a weird sort of way, and that's how I came upon this, uh, invention. So um, so yeah, so it's a cool thing. So if you want to heat your home or a room, I guess this is a room type of device, you know, like a radiator in each room, uh, would be like an invention like this with the organite brick and a um, and a uh, fluorescent bulb. You'd need one of these in each room to actually heat your house. You could have it like a fire type of like heat source where it uh, where it uh, where it acts as a type of radiant heat source um but that uh people gather around to stay warm um but but yeah that's how you do it so if you got any old fluorescent bulbs that burnt out and aren't worth worth a penny to their name um 
yeah, there's, there's here's to some new life for them. This is a um, experimental uh, heat radiator, <laughs> uh, infrared heat radiator. And who knows, maybe I, I'm going to try and take this and hook it. Or I'm going to hook it up there with uh, on that aluminum plate with some, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, uh, sticky foam and um, mounting foam and uh, hook the ends up to the plate and uh, see if I can't get it to actually grow the plants that are there under there. Because if this is infrared heat coming off of this, like any type of infrared heat, um, it actually is good. For, I read an article. I read an article. Oh, God. And um, it's actually good for the development of flowers and stems and all that good stuff um, on its own. So, um, so I don't know. Um, I mean, with proper sunlight, the infrared is what really uh, boosts the plant growth um, to its proper stages. So yeah, so there. So there's a little update, and uh, that's what I'm working on right now. So we're making some cool discoveries. Stuff that could change the planet in a good way. So a good way to recycle uh, fluorescent tubes that burn out instead of just smashing them and contaminating the world with mercury. So they're actually worth their weight and uh, mercury. <laughs> I don't know what to say but um but yeah uh any any type of evacuated evacuated tube um of neon or um fluorescent tubes or anything uh, could function as a good heat source or some uh, as some other type of oscillator so um so the thing is if you get an actual um reson uh resonance to occur could probably light get some light out of that too so um so yeah that's where that's where i'm at so the so we're using the magnetic field in a in a in a very long spark gap um to get heat so that's a pretty cool little invention so thanks for watching and i give of this invention freely so everyone around the world can have free heat, no power in the dead of winter, even if they're, um, there's an EMP and the whole world is out of electricity. Um, you can have a way to heat your home um, in nuclear winter uh, for free, and you don't have to pay the government anything, or you don't have to pay the utilities. You can heat your home for free. There you go. Oh, um, maybe, I don't know, just heat a room. At least it's enough to survive on. So, so, is the, so this is a survival type of thing. Um, so it's like a backup for your home's uh, system in case of an emergency. So, so I'd look into this if um, you're interested in survivalist stuff and prepping or um, any of that. Um, this is a good way to keep your home warm in the dead of winter in case there's a power outage or um, or any of that. You know, in case you run out of firewood and in case your stove stops working or um or any of that you're you run out of or your gas stops working or um or your electricity is blacked out uh if you run out of firewood if you run out of gas if you run out of uh, electricity this is your go-to uh so i don't die <laughs> um device you can keep one room warm for throughout the night and I've proven this by just having it in my in my possession and inventing it. So this is a good survival thing. And I could actually I could actually I'm gonna try and build it into a workable unit where it isn't just wires all connecting stuff <laughs> together haphazardly. I'm actually gonna buy a um or maybe I could, I could just use one of the ballasts we have. A ballast and take the transformer out take the wires out uh, well not all the wires but uh, take the transformer out uh take away the wall plug you know the the uh the uh, electrical cord the plug-in cord out of it um 
wire up the um the um what call it the the um the electrodes um and sync those into organite get a cast like a brick of organite sync those into the organite um uh, put the thing back together and then just have it as a little standalone unit and you can put it on the wall or the ceiling or anything under a cupboard like above the stove or something or under a cabinet and then you just have free heat for you know forever so um and then when you're done if it if it's like uh it's like um like summer or something and you don't need the extra heat you can just put it outside or in a garage or something where you know the extra heat won't hurt anything and um and then you're done so thanks for watching this is michael ellis